Radiation therapists help treat patients with cancer. In this video, we're going to help you answer the question, should you become a radiation therapist in 2020? We're going to go over the latest salaries, job market statistics, and the latest trends. Coming up. Hey everyone, Stephen Hack here with Career Watch, where I help you with your career search. If you end up enjoying the video, hit that thumbs up to support the channel. All the charts and graphs used in this video are available at my blog at www.careerwatch.co slash blog slash radiation therapist. Radiation therapists have a number of roles and responsibilities. They explain treatment plans to patients and answer questions. During treatments, they ensure patients and themselves are adequately protected from radiation exposure. They help determine the precise location of the area in need of treatment. They are experts in calibrating and operating radiation machines, and they monitor and keep records of patient progress. So what is the average salary of a radiation therapist? Well, this first set of data is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It doesn't include tips, overtime, and other benefits. It only includes base salaries. In 1909, the average base salary for a radiation therapist was $43,360. This rose to $91,620 in 2019. From 1999 to 2019, the average base salary of radiation therapists more than doubled. Wages rose by $48,260, and this is a wage growth of over $4,000 per year. Very few occupations are seeing this kind of wage growth. Using this average yearly wage growth, we can predict that in 2020, the average base salary is around $96,000 per year, and by 2029, the average base salary for a radiation therapist could be around $131,000 per year. Although the distribution of pay among radiation therapists is not even at all, a starting salary for a radiation therapist would be probably around the 10th percentile for pay, around $60,000 per year. Radiation therapists that have lots of experience and probably live in a hot job market, the top 10% of radiation therapists earn more than $128,000 per year. In fact, there is a $70,000 difference between the 10th percentile, a starting salary, and the 90th percentile, someone that's later in their career. There is a couple different factors that influence the pay of radiation therapists. The first one of these is geography. Different states tend to pay radiation therapists different amounts of money. In fact, there's almost a $48,000 difference between the highest paying state for radiation therapists and the lowest paying state. High paying states using 2019 data include California, New York, New Jersey, Oregon, Washington, Rhode Island, and Connecticut, with the highest being California with the average base salary of over $119,000 per year. Low paying states include the state of Kansas, Tennessee, West Virginia, Arkansas, Louisiana, Kentucky, and the state of Missouri, which is the lowest paying state at $77,200. Of course, all these states have a lower cost of living than the highest paying state, California. Another factor that influences the pay of radiation therapists is work environment. Outpatient care centers tend to pay radiation therapists the most amount of money, with an average base salary of around $97,000 per year. Hospitals, on average, tend to pay radiation therapists $84,000 per year. So there's quite a gap. There's actually a $13,000 difference between the highest paying work environment and the lowest. And finally, regarding pay, radiation therapists do really well compared to similar occupations. To get into this occupation, you really just need an associate's degree. We'll actually get into the requirements a little bit later in the video. But compared to similar occupations, they earn far more money than cardiovascular techs, radiologic and MRI techs, respiratory therapists, and surgical techs. So that covers the compensation of radiation therapists. Next, let's take a look at the job market. Is this a growing field or is this a shrinking field? If you were to try and enter this occupation, would you have a hard time or would you have an easy time? How competitive is it? Well, we're also gonna look at Bureau of Labor Statistics data and they have been tracking radiation therapists since 1999. In 1909, there was 12,340 employed radiation therapists across the country. By 2019, this rose to 17,860 employed radiation therapists. So this is a growth of about 6,000 jobs over about two decades. Since 2011, employment has been a little rocky. It hasn't been growing that much. 
But the Bureau of Labor Statistics is optimistic about the future job market of radiation therapists. They're predicting a 7% growth in the number of jobs over the next 10 years. This means by 2029, there should be around 19,000 employed radiation therapists. The reasoning behind this is our population is getting older. The baby boom population is going into retirement right now. And as people get older, they have a higher probability of getting cancer, unfortunately. So this could drive more employment for radiation therapists. And because this is a healthcare occupation, there are jobs in pretty much every state. And usually the greater the population of the state, the more employment opportunities there are. The state with the greatest number of radiation therapists right now is the state of Texas, and following close behind is California and Florida and New York. And this is because that's where this is where all the people live, and this is a healthcare occupation. So how competitive is it to get this kind of job? Well, one way I do this is I use Indeed.com. Indeed is a search engine, and it brings in job postings from many different sources. So I typed in radiation therapist or radiation therapy into indeed.com and there was about 1700 job postings. So there's about 18,000 employed against 1700. This gives us one job opening on indeed.com per 10 employed radiation therapists. This is actually really good for people that are interested in this occupation. Anything below 15 means there's actually a shortage. So it actually could be easier to get into this occupation than many people would think. There's actually many occupations, including like chiropractors and lawyers, where it's much harder to get into the occupation. And if you did enter this occupation, chances are you'd be working at a hospital because 63% of radiation therapists work in hospitals, 24% doctor's offices, and only about 6% work in outpatient care centers. And again, outpatient care centers tend to pay a greater amount of money. But there is one warning. This is a tiny occupation. There's only around 18,000 radiation therapists, whereas there's 56,000 cardiovascular techs, about 207,000 radiologic and MRI techs, 132,000 respiratory therapists, and 109,000 surgical techs. So this is a very niche occupation. So the next question would be, is this occupation compatible with your interests and your personality? If you haven't done a Holland Code assessment, definitely do. This is a free assessment that tries to gauge where your interests lie and you can compare how you did on a RIASEC assessment with radiation therapists. When taking a RIASEC assessment, radiation therapists tend to score high in the social and realistic themes. People that score high in the social theme tend to describe themselves as helpful, cooperative, cheerful, and patient. They're often motivated by helping, empowering, and instructing others. This makes a lot of sense. You have to be extremely empathetic to become a radiation therapist. You're going to be working with lots of cancer patients. People that score high in the realistic theme tend to describe themselves as reliable, practical, thrifty, reserved, and self-reliant, and they are often motivated by building, repairing, and being outdoors. Radiation therapists operate a lot of machinery. So this, this makes sense. Regarding whether your personality is compatible with this occupation, you can definitely do a Myers-Briggs assessment. Many people discover their Myers-Briggs type to help them try and pick out a career. According to the second edition of MBTI type tables, the most common Myers-Briggs type for this occupation is the protector ISFJs. Second most common is the caregiver ESFJ third, the director, ESTJ, and fourth, the performer, ESFP. So what kind of education do you need to enter this occupation? What is the barrier to entry? Well, most radiation therapists do either an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree in radiation therapy. In most states, they have to be licensed, but not every single state regulates this occupation. They all have their own rules and regulations. The Bureau of Labor Statistics did do a survey in 2017 of the education of radiation therapists. They found that about 6% had high school diploma or equivalent, 12% some college, 31% an associate's degree, 45% a bachelor's degree, and only about 6% had a master's degree. So as you can see, there are pros and cons to becoming a radiation therapist in 2020. This is an extremely high paying occupation, given that it only really requires an associate's degree. In fact, they are seeing $4,000 per year wage growth based off the past two decades. 
This means that by 2029, they could see an average base salary of around 131,000 per year, and it only requires an associate's degree to get in. Regarding the education of radiation therapists, about 70% usually have an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. Not every state regulates radiation therapists, so you sometimes get people that just have a high school diploma or some college that get into this occupation. The job growth is okay. They're predicting a 7% growth in the number of jobs, but there really hasn't been so much job growth since about the year 2011. But when you do look at Indeed.com and you compare the job postings against the number of employed, it looks really good for radiation therapists. The ratio is one job posting per 10 employed. That is one of the best ratios I have seen. Are you a radiation therapist? What do you enjoy about this occupation and what do you dislike about this occupation? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.